Okay guys, welcome back. So, uh, real treat for us today, we're with, joined by Alex, the Vice President of Fujikura Shafts. Nice to see you, Alex. Well, thanks for having me, yeah. Not at all. So, um, big, big product launch for you guys this year at the Absolutely. show. Um, the, the Ventus shaft's been something that we've kind of heard the whispers of for a little while and you guys have been pretty excited to, to launch it this week. We are. We've been developing this thing for a while. Mm -hmm. It's um, something we're really proud about. Um, some really cool technologies that we've integrated into the shaft right. for this year, right? And so um, some of the cool things I could talk about is uh, we've got something we call VeloCore. Right. It's a super, uh, it's a multi-material bias core mm -hmm. where we've used... Um, a material that's like three times stiffer than standard carbon fiber. Okay. And when you put that in a bias core, and we did it full length on this mm. thing, it's not just like a small piece, it's full length of this material, and it really helps control the twisting of the shaft, yep. and, um, and the feel is really stable. Right. And of course, on top of that, we made this tip, I'd say probably one of the stiffest tips we've ever made in golf shafts. So, and during the development, it seemed kind of absurd how mm. far we were going with that stiffness but uh, in player testing it just performed so well keeping the ball fight kind of low to mid mm -hmm. and kind of keeping the spin down a little bit and so it was just a really good launch so yesterday we were hitting into the yeah. wind 30 mile per hour winds I heard were coming right at us and um, you know people hitting this shaft into the wind there's that ball was just cutting right through it it's such a such a tough balance act for you guys because you know I'm hearing you you know, talk about all the stability and we put you know, it's 70 ton, you know, full-end 70 ton That's carbon right. fiber in there, uh, and everything's stabilizing. But at the same time, yesterday when we hit it, Matt tested it, and, and the first thing he went so smooth, you know, yes. so nice, such a nice feel. Feels like it really eat loads so easily. Right. So that to me sounds like you've got the balance so right with the stability from the Correct. the design profile, but you know, from just you know, still from a player perspective, it doesn't feel like work. Yeah, so the pr part of that is also that we have a really short butt parallel on this, right? right? So it starts tapering pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. So that geometry kind of builds a lot of um, forgiveness right. in the handle area, mm -hmm. you know? So you can really get a good loading on it. Mm -hmm. And so that helps balance out that kind of stiffness here that yeah. really helps, again, kind of keep that uh, head stable. Yeah. And helps, like, what we've seen is, like, for impacts, even a little bit off center face, yeah. right? We're getting good ball speeds, really high ball right. speeds. And that was surprising. Um, so we kind of say this shaft has an ability to increase the head MOI. For sure. In the sense that, you know, we're not just, we're increasing the sweet spot almost, yeah. you know, like you could be less precise mm -hmm. on impacts and yeah. still get some really good high club head speeds. Well, that's, that's ball speeds, I mean. very, very interesting to hear that you can pair a, 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 an extremely high MOI head with what is an MOI enhancer in, in Ventus yeah, and end up more with something. Yeah, because if, if, if your strike point tends to vary a little bit and, and that's maybe not your forte and making the most consistent delivery and you need uh, you know, as much forgiveness as you can possibly get on those off-center hits, you know, pairing something like this up, and we found last year you know, was the year of the G400 head, obviously higher MOI, very stable, yes. uh, but again, very, very quick on ball speed last year. This, this seems to me like it would be a great dance partner for that. That particular Absolutely. Head. Absolutely. Um, I'd love to segue a little bit into Enzo and, mm -hmm. and being, you know, the guy who, who really kind of, you know, works most with uh, with Enzo. And I'd love to know a little bit about how that's can sort of change the philosophy at, at Fujikura. You know, Enzo has been a, a huge wealth of information and research for us mm -hmm. to understand what the shaft is yeah. contributing mm -hmm. to club head performance, right. right? And so what we're really focusing on is there's a combination of swing, shaft, and head yeah. uh, that are directly you know, leading to what the ball flight mm -hmm. is. And so we want to make understand those connections. Right. And you know, the way fitting is done today, there's a lot of uh, human intuition. There's right. a lot of experience yep. with the part, but there's a lot of detail that's hard to track. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of shafts on, on a fitting wall and it's not always easy to remember mm -hmm. these things. So my goal is trying to like improve the fitting experience through technology. Right. And Enzo is helping us kind of better understand subtle nuances in shaft characteristics and how they affect things like elevation, direction, sure. speed of the club head, yeah. um, spin. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the research we've been doing has been pretty invaluable and it, mm -hmm. and it, and it does more than just help us understand uh, maybe a better way to fit, yeah. but it helps, under, helps us understand how the shaft is behaving with the swing yeah. so that we can design better parts. Sure. 
So it's hitting on both sides, not just on the fitting, but also on design. So, you know, we, we brought out Enzo Technologies as early back as, as Pro, when we wanted to hand, mm -hmm. when we started seeing people swinging shafts and the loading wasn't there. Yep. Pro was a, a softening of the handle and then we could measure mm -hmm. more loading, right. which helped people get more club head speed and more uh, feel. More acceleration. Yeah, and so and then you know with with, ex, with the Pro Accelerate yep. and, the, and the Speeder Pro Accelerates back then we were trying to get more kick. Yeah. And so with that, you know, we found a profile that helped generate more kick mm -hmm. through Enzo data. Right. But I think over time we keep getting more sophisticated with mm -hmm. how we use this data. Right. And uh, and one of the things we're really interested in now is the trade-off. When mm -hmm. you try to improve something, there's a trade-off usually mm -hmm. that has to get. Right. So what, what we want to do is maybe more balance these trade-offs so that uh, those trade-offs aren't, aren't, so mm -hmm. aren't so significant. Yeah. Um, we want to optimize the structure so that you could get the right launch conditions, uh, the right club head speed, and sacrifice as little as possible. Right. And to do that, we're seeing that there's a lot of cool things in design that we've mm -hmm. never tried. Mm -hmm. uh, and these new materials that are coming out that we're, we're leveraging, like whether it's these pitch type 70 ton, sure. 80 ton, mm -hmm. um, the woven type materials, there's a lot of cool stuff that we're experimenting with now that helps us really change, I think, the way we've designed in the past yep. and how performance is gonna be driven. And I, one example of that is um, how we talk about twisting of the shaft. Yep. That's been a big deal. What we've done is in our testing with Enzo, the twist is something, um, that's kind of been brushed over. Mm -hmm. You know, people talk about twist as just a one number. Right. Like, oh, it's a three degree, it's a four mm -hmm. degree, or a five degree, and that number isn't very descriptive. Mm -hmm. And um, what we've seen in our testing is there's more to be said and to be done with how a shaft twists. Right. And so, yeah, with Ventus, we kind of covered a little bit of that. We kind of made that velo core with this very stable twisting, but uh, you know, what we're gonna see that is that different sections of the shaft mm -hmm. and how they twist yeah. is more significant than the overall twist. Interesting. And they affect um, a lot of different performance metrics yeah. of the shaft. So as we continue to grow with Enzo and grow with our understanding of the, the data we collect, yeah. there's a wealth of design and performance benefit we can bring to the golf public. For sure. And that's really what we're after. I remember when I first, uh, you know, got with you guys and, and looked at Enzo. I mean, I want to say it was 2011 here at the show and you guys brought Enzo actually here. Yeah. And um, we were, for the first time, looking at these these types of things and these measuring devices. And, uh, you know, and, and you guys, the, the message was that Sure, TrackMan is your impact launch monitor, but Enzo is your pre-impact launch monitor, right. right? So we're we're able to learn everything that happens prior to Im yes. uh, to impact with the load, with the way the shaft will react, with the way the head will will then react on uh, on the downswing. Uh, and I thought that was such an interesting thing to think of. Is you know, it's it's all very well to know what happens at impact, but. What's the story before that? How did it get to impact? And, and is it doing it in the most efficient method possible? You know, that's very yeah, important. And, and shaft guys, you know, we wanted to know that information. It wasn't yeah. available. Mm -hmm. And uh, there, so we had to go out and create it. Sure. Um, and then when we started seeing this information, um, it was exciting. No yeah. one had seen how a shaft mm -hmm. deflects during the swing. Yeah. No one had seen how a shaft twists or how much loft it adds and measure that yeah. and, um, and see how that combination works with different mm -hmm. swing types. Um, the challenge then was to then say, well, you have all this information, now how do you, what do you do with right. it? So that's been a big work in progress because it comes down to mm -hmm. a lot of data analytics sure. and a lot of statisticians. Mm -hmm. you know? So we've, our, our interns for the last three years have been stats guys. Yeah. You know, we went from engineers, engineers, to all of a sudden stats. Mm -hmm. And so it's a data world yep. and uh, we're playing this data game and we're trying to leverage information to just make our products, mm -hmm. products as the best we can. Yeah. I say we've leveraged, you know, we've got, we lean on 45 years of shaft making experience. We've worked with great players mm -hmm. and, uh, we're, and we're lucky to have that. And so we've developed great products over that time. How do you make it better? Yeah. Well, you gotta do these little, little things where you're diving into the, the data to learn things you've never learned before, mm -hmm. right? And so there's different ways with design. There's a lot of different ways to look at the fit and, uh, and I th you're gonna see some really exciting stuff coming out from Fuji Kura that's gonna work with those type of things. What would you say, I mean, for, for the, the, the kind of people watching who maybe, you know, talk, when we start talking about, you know, the way the shaft deflects and, and, and the types of things that Enzo is, is really capturing, 
how can we sort of add some value to that in that what are the parameters we're working with? So if someone looks at a, so a tip soft shaft, or let's even call it for a general term, a high launch shaft, what are we looking at in the difference in performance with a, a, a designated high launch and a designated low launch? What are, what are people likely to see? Or is there any correlation with consistency on that? You know, are we unlikely to see the same thing twice from two different players with the same shaft? I would, that's a good question. And there's generalizations mm -hmm. on these type of things and we try to sometimes design for generalness mm -hmm. and that's the best we can do. Sure, Obviously, sure. Sometimes rules get broken yeah. and the general case doesn't happen. So sure. we try to offer mm -hmm. a breadth of products so yep. that when that happens, there's another type of product that should execute what you're trying to do. Right. But, but I can't say there's a, a one size fits all. Yeah. And um, you know, it brings up another conversation about just some of our analysis and mm -hmm. what chefs do. It's, I think I could, I could kind of express some of the stuff we've been working on that's been an eye opener. Right. And that would be, an example would be, um, we look at, for example, shaft, how much it adds loft. That's right. an example. Yeah, sure. It's a simple the, one. People the, look the at- The addition of dynamic loft through the, through the deflection process, yeah. And we would say, you know, some shafts add more loft than another. Right. And from a shaft design guy, you know, I would say, okay, well, that's trivial. That's mm -hmm. the one that adds more loft should launch the ball higher. Yeah. And we wanted to kind of end it right there. Mm -hmm. And as we've done more research, that hasn't been the case. Right. And that's kind of like a, for a lot of people, they won't, it's hard to wrap their head around that. Mm -hmm. So a shaft that adds more launch may not launch higher. Yeah. And that's because there's a golfer involved. Mm -hmm. And the golfer sometimes changing the way he's sure. angling the, the club at impact. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's a huge change to the ball flight. And so when we came upon that, we were kind of, uh, and this is from Enzo data, looking mm -hmm. at all the data and trying to figure this out. Um, it was kind of a downer. We're yeah. like, oh man, the golfer is really changing a ton. But then as we reviewed the, the data more, we found that we could predict the golfer. Right. That the golfer was somehow um, making certain adjustments to the angle sure. as a function of some of the shaft mm -hmm. properties. Yeah. So even though the shaft can add loft and it may not affect the ball flight, the shaft's also changing the golfer. And so we're now integrating all this mm -hmm. into our analysis. Yeah. And it's making it a little more complicated, but I think we're getting closer and closer to, to just better understanding yeah. these type of things. And when, your question was, you know, is there a certain shaft that's gonna do something for the, mm -hmm. the same play? For two different players, I mean, there's so many different nuances in swing. Yeah. And so, you know, somebody who swings 100 miles an hour is not the same as another guy who swings 100 miles an hour. There's so many different ways of achieving yeah. that. And uh, with Enzo, we can see all those different types of swing types, yeah. whether their hands are moving fast or they're sure. slow or yeah. whether they like, release it and they're really efficient mm -hmm. or they're just really overpowering it, yeah. right? Uh, and so different types of swings, different types of deformations, yeah. different, different fit is usually what we would expect. Right. I mean, that's because we, we've been talking about one end of the golf club, but we have to address another end of the golf club. And it's really, you know, that the handle relative to the head at point to, to your point, yeah. of a shaft that, that deflects more the golfer may in, in, you know, a consequence to feeling a little bit of that, pull the hand a little bit more and completely again, change that die. So it doesn't mean the shaft isn't in more lead deflection. It, it's just, we are going to influence that. There's delivery two lock, things happening, 100%. right? Exactly. The golfer is actually providing a larger lever in like ball flight is yep. an example uh, than the shaft. Yep. But the shaft is influencing that golfer. Exactly. So the more we understand mm -hmm. that, the more we could align our specs to make sure the golfers do what we want them to exactly. do. Because it's very likely that we might say, well, let's make a shaft that launches high, mm -hmm. but somehow we put the specs in a place that makes the golfer de-loft. That's right. And we don't want to do that. And so that as we work further with the data, we could align them. Yeah. And that becomes our role as fitters to identify the, the key things that will influence the golfer to, golfer to make the best, most consistent yes. delivery for them to, to obviously hit the, the best shot possible. Yes. You know, but, and I think that has, has often been overlooked. The, the fitter's ability to influence the player's delivery has often been overlooked in the fitting process. It's hard to see that, capture that kind of data. Yep. You would need that in some kind of motion capture system yeah, like yeah. Enzo. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, for a company like us, we try to, you know, put ourselves in the position that 
it's all we do all day every day so we are able to recognize patterns sure. when we see them and, and sure. different load types and and then start to pull you know shafts that match up really well with that player yes um and and this is validation for me hearing things like what you're saying that what you know is supposed to happen doesn't always happen because the golfer can be influenced to make a slightly different delivery yes it's, it's great to hear that that's what you guys are seeing as well so i mean i think it all just you know ultimately will always round back to you have to go get fit you have to go through the process Absolutely. and uh, and and try different you know uh, shafts. But we were chatting you know earlier about you know there's different heads out there as well and, and how the head influences the shaft to to move as well. You'll have different head weights. You'll have different sort of you know CG placements. Heads that are deeper front to back that are you know shorter front to back. They'll make the shaft react a little differently because it's you've true. got two masses working off of one another and you're never going to get the same result twice uh, off of that. So. Um, the testing process is so key. It's absolutely true, and it it's, it's just shows you how difficult it is to do the right fit. Yeah. And so the guys who do this, um, you know, you got to have a lot of respect for them. They have right. a lot of good understanding of the head, the head dynamics, and the shafts, yeah. and the combinations, plus the swing. Sure. There's a lot going on, yeah. and, um, and we're just hoping to improve upon that. Yeah. Well, I think for us, is, is you know, aspirational, uh, aspiring to be the best club fitters that we possibly can be, having you guys as partners and a resource that we can learn more about this sort of stuff and, and pull a little bit from what you guys are learning on, on you know, tools like Enzo, you know, to then partner with what we're trying to do with a little bit of gears in, in, in a, you know, a similar sort of way in our, in our sort of test facility. It just helps us, you know, learn that little bit more, and ultimately then deliver more good information back to our customers and our viewers. Yeah, that's that's our mission to yeah. make golf more enjoyable. Yeah. So the more we can uh, achieve that, 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 that we're doing our job. Awesome, perfect. Well, I mean, you and I could we could sit and talk here uh, about this stuff for for a long, long time. But um, this has been fantastic. I really appreciate your time, Alex. Um, we'll get more to come from, from Fuji Curve. We're going to try and get together with uh, Pat, uh, Fuji Pat, and talk a little bit Fuji about Pat. tour. So. Yeah. Um, more to come. Thanks again. That'll be a better time. talk. Alex, not hey, at all. Yeah. That was awesome. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks Guys, thanks me. so much and we'll see you soon.